Since the jelly pudding days, I've been a loyal listener. But after your latest outrage, I can state without reservation that you have no morals, no taste, no talent, and at least one less listener. Albertine Gibson, Norwood. By the summer of 1984, the Frogs Ratings Initiative had ground to a halt, and the Cincinnati Radio War had begun to take its toll. WEBN Program Director Denton Marr was sent packing to Houston, six-shooter in hand. His replacement? A tall, lanky kid from Louisville. The struggle within and without was for WEBN's very existence. 1984, when Tom Owens came to Cincinnati, uh, WKRC, WEBN, and Q102 were the top stations in town. Uh, Bob Lawrence, Dave Martin, and I had just left Taft Broadcasting and bought WLW and a little FM in Hamilton, WSKS. That's when WSKS and WBLZ were both in Hamilton. I think BLZ was disco and everybody called them sucks and blows. We did our best not to let down the sucks part of the equation. Uh, we uh, put on a sort of a low-end dirt ball rock format from a double-wide trailer in Hamilton. Hired a couple of wackos out of Cleveland, Marty Bender, who's in Indianapolis now, and Eddie Fingers, I don't know why, may not be even be in radio, I don't know, to do the morning show and uh, basically do a lot of crotch humor and uh, blue material uh, and, and play sort of the nastiest low-end rock and roll we could find. Denton Marr was absolutely clueless, and even with a bad signal, we were making some real gains on WEBN. And then uh, Bo brought this uh, guy up from Louisville, Tom Owens, who knew exactly what to do. Every move we made, he topped it. Every hill we tried to take, he was already on top. I mean, Tom Owens was a guy who really knew how to roll up his sleeves and get down in the mud. Tom Owens. It doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, there's a couple of things I uh, respect about Tom. I mean, first off, obviously, his eye for talent, because, I mean, this is the third time I've worked for him. Uh, he hired me out of college, and then he hired me again in Louisville, which was weird. I was in between jobs, was just down for a visit, and uh, he hits me up and says, hey, you want to work for me, you know? I'm like, Louisville, right, you know, like I'm in, you know, ratings fixing exile too, but I want to consider it, I need the money. So he's going to take me out for a little lunch. I am thinking he's going to take me to some cool restaurant. No, man, he takes me out for hamburgers. But it was there, though, that I found the other thing that I respect about Tom, because he took me to his apartment, and... Uh, Man, that's where I found out that he has great taste in women. I mean, his wife is so fucking hot. This means that I'm committed to a woman to, like, share all my money with. See, that's a beautiful piece of gold. Share my money with and buy her houses and clothes and stuff. But I can basically have sex with any... It's an open marriage. Wide open. I can have sex with any woman I want to. I am as mad as hell about your new billboard. I think this piece of crap should be taken down and put in a garbage can where it belongs with all the other trash. I think you owe women a big apology, like over the television. Very angry and disgusted, Mickey Martin, Delhi. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> you talking to me? Tom Owens, do I miss Tom Owens? He's my special boy. I really miss Tom Owens a lot. There's, there's lots and lots of things I miss about Tom. Ten, actually. In fact, I have right here the top ten things I miss about Tom Owens. Number ten, his smile. Nine, those, those moonlit strolls along the beach. Eight, he saw in me a talent no one else perceived. Seven, two words, free toes Friday. Six, under his direction, I was able to grow as an artist. Number five, the way he'd hold me when a bit would be. Four, uh, now I have to buy my own subscription to Chicks and Dicks. Number three, the way he'd sing to me with those guitar serenades. Two, sucking up. That, that was really a good idea, boss. That was even better than your last one. <laughs> and the number one thing I miss about Tom Owens, Candy, his wife. She's so damn pretty.
And I am the juice of the morning show. I remember when Frank Wood woke up one morning and said, you know, we're going to have to do something with this morning show. We're going to hire Eddie. And let's put Wild Man and see what he can do. He can juice it up. The rest is history. What's that on your mustache? Mmm. <laughs> That's some of that juice. Mmm, it must have been her pussy from last night. <laughs> Dennis Wildman Walker. The juice. And the quintessential team player. And then Tom calls me yesterday. At, we get in at 5 o'clock in the morning. He called me at 10 going, Hey, did you get us any of that stuff? Is this all we got? I said, yeah, that's all we got. And Tom goes, oh, I thought you were going to help us on this. I said, Tom, he didn't show up. Oh, we got to get this thing for Wendy's, man. It's like, you're going to fucking pay for all my expenses, what you're going to do. I'm a little pissed. This is ridiculous. Fucking really absurd. But, you know, the two weeks, they had two weeks to do this bullshit, and they didn't do it. I'm bailing them out on my vacation time. That ain't going to happen no more. You want to find me? Call the Bahamas. That's where I'll be. Next year on vacation, I'm going to the Bahamas, and I'm going to Plant City. Fuck you guys. Tom. Well, one of the really great things about working with Tom over the years was his... Protection of the product. I mean, product programming integrity was really important to Tom. I mean, product is king, and he knew it. And um, as the uh, job around here became more difficult um, for the sales department selling the radio station, I mean, Tom was able to stand up and say no. When the, when the clients wanted more value added and the salespeople came in after a hard day and they went back to Tom to talk about promotions, he was able to say no. His relationship with the sales department was just so unique, and I think a large part of that was derived from his ability to say no. The most wonderful thing about Tom is that he's gone. He's not here anymore. Now, if we could only get rid of Joe. Tom always allowed me to express myself creatively. Uh, you know, no matter how stupid it, it may have appeared. Tom understood me. He's brilliant. I think Tom's real gift to the station, what he really has left us, besides the porn collection, is, uh, is the image that he managed to create in the public's mind about what the station is about and, and how that's solidified and how he came up with ideas constantly with current events that would happen and turn them into liners and, and, and magazine ads and, and TV commercials. So that, of course, I think is, is one of his lasting legacies. One of his best TV commercials, he really he had an idea one night and it was on TV the next day and that was really brilliant. I've, I've got it uh, right here, as a matter of fact. It's just a good example of, of the kind of ideas this man can come up with. This is what happens when you let sick people play with powerful toys. That was, that was really one of his finest moments, one of his best ideas. Uh, of course, there was no child thing, but, uh, but it, was, it was pretty good. Owens. Owens. What did he look like? WEBN's new TV commercial greatly offends me. I believe the station has gone beyond the limits of its own bad taste. The action of the dolls should not be allowed on commercial television, which, as you seem to have forgotten, has children as viewers. I thought we were trying to clean up television. Sandra I. Hall, Deer Park. Yeah, fuck them. I thought it was a joke because of the Bobbit thing. It was not a joke. Apparently, Tom had done some research and found that people like to hear the word penis. He sent a memo out, and in that memo, there was a directive. It stated that we had to say the word penis in every news story. President Clinton and his penis arrived in earthquake-stricken Los Angeles today. And along for the ride, Hillary and her penis. News, brute force satellite weather, and John Phillips and his penis, next. Now, EBN has been so big and successful all these years. Because of uh, Tom Owens? Tom Owens? Oh, that's bullshit. I'm a seven chair just reading the weather. What a day. What a dank, depressing, gray, awful, rainy day. It just makes you feel like going home and curling up into a little ball and dying, doesn't it? It's 
awful. It's terrible. It's depressing. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, over the years, I've learned a great deal from Tom Owens, but uh, it's kind of funny. There's one thing he said to me that I will never, ever forget. He said, Steve, you never want to be more than 40 seconds away from Machine Head. Hey, how you doing? Steve Cade stepping in at the Rock and Roll Station. We're doing 30 minutes nonstop. It's Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water at W-E-B-N. All right, I'm sorry, man. Where was it? Uh, six foot, uh, brown hair, Tom. Mm -hmm. I do remember he had a very attractive wife. Well, it's going to be absolutely terrific to have Tom downtown. We can really use his help as the company grows and we get involved in new projects. I'm a little concerned about Tom adjusting to the atmosphere. He's used to the radio station where disc jockeys are running around, record people are coming in with new product, people are wearing all sorts of goofy clothes. Downtown, we have a much more conservative atmosphere. He's going to be dealing with lawyers and accountants and bankers and that sort of thing. But uh, I, I really uh, am looking forward to it and hope that he makes the adjustment. Brian! Brian! Anybody seen Biller? I, Brian! Listen, I got a project for you. Brian Biller! A decade of decadence passed, and by early 1994, the Owens years at WEBN drew to a close, with the mantle of power reluctantly dumped on legendary renegade programmer Mark Chase. As the ratings war rages on, Owens jumps aboard the relative safety of the corporate treadmill, and the survivors remaining atop Frog's Mountain will always look back and remember the Owens years with admiration fondness and great respect oh and just between you and me his wife is fucking hot of course there was no child thing but uh, it was it was pretty good brian brian where the hell jeez brian <laughs> 